Hi Beeros and welcome to another Hype Machine slash Sofa Sessions. We've got a brand new sofa with too many cushions. Can you have too many cushions? I don't know. I don't know, Johnny. Uh, it's better to have too many than too few, isn't it? More options. I, I guess so. I guess so. Once we lean back and exaltation at the beers we're about to drink, we'll see exactly. how many cushions were needed. Yes. Um, so the Hype Train is a new series we're doing, getting hold of the rarest beers, the stuff that uh, people are trading lots of Lambic for. What we're hoping is that we can try and escape that bubble a little bit and have a more objective view of whether yeah. these are fantastic beers, whether they're worth hunting down or worth paying for or worth trading some beautiful Lambic for, which I do not condone. That, I must say, so far, they all pretty much have lived up to the hype train. Yeah, they have been um, amazing. But today we have the ultimate hype beer. Mm -hmm. um, there's sort of the trifecta of rare IPAs. There's Pliny the Elder, yes. there's Heady Topper, yes. and there's Treehouse Julius. Now, we've been to Treehouse, and you can watch that video at the end of this video. And I had the most amazing time, met the most amazing people, and drank. I, I think Julius is the best New England IPA in the world. But this week, we have three beers from Treehouse that aren't Julius. My God. Um, one of which is equally as sought after. How oh, have you got these, Johnny? You've got your, your underworld connections. I can't divulge my sources, but Dark no Quinn. Cantillon was harmed in the procurement of this. So let's dive into these and see whether it's worth jumping on the hype train. Doo -doo. So the first beer we have, and I absolutely adore this can design. Uh, this is called Lights On. It's got a nice tree housey vibe. Lights On to it. Is that like on. a sexy leave the lights on? I don't know. Well, and, well, there could be some action happening in that hut. I mean, it's a lone, that's a break back mountain hut if ever I've seen one. <laughs> so uh, there you go. So this is an American pale ale. So uh -huh. it's Going to be hopefully a little bit more balanced, a little bit more drinkable uh, or smashable, perhaps, than the bigger IPAs. Boshable. Boshable. Like it. Um, I'm told we're going to get notes of peach, mango, papaya and citrus. When you say you're told, you meant you read the back of the I can. I read the back of the can, the can told cool. me. The can speaks to me. I can smell it from here. You're like a can whisperer, Johnny. <laughs> it's quite amazing to or, watch. Or a dude who can read. <laughs> I'd say papaya is pretty much right, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah. I feel like I'm walking through a tropical jungle and a baboon or potentially a gibbon has just thrown a papaya at me. Does it matter what kind of... Monkey. Yeah. Well, gibbons are my favourite monkeys. So you prefer a gibbon? A little bit herbal as well, a little bit of green. Yeah, tea. it's not like massive explosions, is it? No, but, it's, it, but it, feels, it smells delicious. It smells delicious. As smooth as you like. It's really light on the palate, isn't it? Very light. Very light, very clean. Not crisp, there's almost no bitterness, but there's just enough. Yeah. It's really nicely balanced and it's, yeah, like slightly watered down papaya with a bit of hmm. multi sweetness to it. Very wheaty as well, a bit wit like almost. Yeah, it's got like that, that thickness you might expect in a yeah, wit. Yeah, with, with a Belgian wit, yeah. Which is like lovely actually. In regards to the hype train, you kind of want potentially stuff that's bigger than this I would say to you to be throwing your money out if it's that rare not yeah, something so fashionable you people, want people on of... the hype train are looking for these bad boys yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but it's interesting well, I'd rather have that. a six or that possibly than these guys but so we'll, would you we'll swap see. well let's see would you swap one of those for six of them we'll, well find let's, out let's find out at the end of the video hey. yeah. what what wonders have you got in store so for next, us now next Alter Ego so Alter Ego uh, is the like the the sister brother, don't know which, of Julius, which is their main IPA. Oh, so that's why it's okay. called Alter Ego. That's cool. Uh, so it's made with mosaic and amarillo. So we're going to get some funky, dank, juicy fruit and probably yeah. some orange, sherbet-y citrus. Um, I should say at this point, we have also tried Julius and that video will be at the end of the uh, this video as well. We compared it with some Trillium beer, uh, mm -hmm. Heady Topper, and then a beer that we brewed. Uh, <laughs> slightly Obviously our house was... Uh, it was all right. It was all right. right. <laughs> So Julius is really orangey. Yeah. This one's a little bit sweatier, but in a nice way, mm -hmm. a little bit dank. And it's, I'd say a little bit more mango-y, a little bit more yeah, overripe tropical, again. tropical fruit. A bit more, definitely more pungent than Julius. Julius is a nice soft fruitiness. This is pungent, which is that mosaic, I think, mm. which has that almost like slightly fermented fruit sharpness. So smooth again, I mean, yeah. it's kind of crazy how, how easy drinking that is. 
New England beers are often criticised for being really flabby. Mm -hmm. um, and after a couple of sips, it's sort of just like kind of residually stuck around your gullet. Um, these beers do not do that. They're no. lightning quick on the finish. They're yeah. super fresh. There's no astringency. There's no bitterness. There's no flabby sugariness. Mm. They're just stunningly, stunningly clean. Almost like... It's clear. It's very clean, isn't it? That's the thing. It's, it's there a minute and then it's gone. Yeah. It's so it's clean. It's like, like, like a Belgian blonde kind of finish where there's no bitterness, but it just... It's full flavour, full flavour, gone. And that's why you end up drinking 6% beers like their lagers. And you could do the same with these. Anyone that criticises New England IPAs for being flabby needs to sit down and have these beers and see that they don't have to be. It's not inherent in the style. No. It's a brewing flaw. Ah, it's good drinking. It's good drinking. 6.8, mate. Can you believe that? I kind of want it to be a bit bigger, though, really. In a hype train, I want explosions. I want fireworks. So you want the Jerry Bruckheimer, Michael Bay, full bay. I want you to take me full bay. <laughs> right. So you want a blockbuster of a beer now. Right I've, now. I've loaded the hype train with coal and I exactly. think this is what's going to take us over the edge. Come on. So Brilliant. we have green. Interesting. Um, they're saying pineapple, orange, sorbet. Specifically orange sorbet. sorbet. So zingy, refreshing, light. Like it. Uh, and tangerine. So this is greenhouse. None of those Greenhouse. Things, none of those things Should are green. That. Treehouse green. Treehouse green. Nothing green about that. No. Um, so I was uh, not resiny and kind of piney and... I, I'd be expecting piney from, from a name like green. It's really sweet. It's a really Very. sweet smell. Yeah. So is that the is that the tangerine tangerine kind of yeah, and I think maybe just a, a little hint of nice warming alcohol that might yeah. be in there. Um, orange sorbet doesn't seem quite right to me, nor pineapple, but tangerine definitely. Tangerine dream, kind of candied orange rather than a sorbet. Yeah, definite lots of sweetness going on. I mean, that is the full bay. It's, it's still not, going. It's not disappointing. Yeah, it's hanging around this one. <laughs> That's, that has got just a tiny hint of flabbiness, but also it's got lots of bitterness. Yeah, there's a lot Which you don't really expect with Treehouse beers or New England IPAs as a whole. I'm it's getting a little bit of burn, actually. Yeah, there's definitely an absolute mother ton yeah. of TNT hops. Boom! Helicopter, AK, <laughs> just flashing words. I don't really watch disaster movies. Underground explosions! <laughs> You know, like things bursting up out the ground, monsters. Yeah. It's like aliens attacking. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what it's like. It's like, you know, when a tanker goes off a cliff. Oh, and yeah. It ex like it explodes as it goes over, it explodes as it hit the rocks, and then it lands, and then there's a tiny beat, and then it just goes boom. That's what totally this is. Because you keep explosion. thinking it's going to end. And it kills building. And then all the fruitiness and the pine goes, and then boom, the bitterness kicks in. Full bay. Full bay. Um, no sorbet. No sorbet. But for, for for bay. It's a really nicely made beer, but I find myself reaching for these two more than the green. Interesting. So the, the question is, Johnny, six of those or one of the other? I'd take a six pack of that. That is not in the game. So. <laughs> okay, six pack of lights out. Lights yeah. on. Lights on. Lights, lights on, out will lights happen off. after the six pack. Wax on, wax off. <laughs> yeah, I think hype train wise, again, it's kind of lived up to expectations. Mm. Uh, I feel like this beer is brewed to be drunk in a third at a festival. Yeah. Or it's designed to be shared between three of you around a table. It mm. is a hype train beer. Hype juice. Lots of people very excited about it. Sit around a table, yeah, drink yeah, it, yeah. deconstruct it. These two are cut stone cold smashes. Yeah, man, I'd, I'd happily sit there all day drinking that boy, bad boy. Yeah. For sure. Well then, let's do that. Let's go to Treehouse. If anyone from Treehouse is watching, we're going to come. We'll hope that Light's on or Julius or Alter Ego are on and we'll, we'll outstay our welcome. And you guys should too. Like These beers are well worth the hype. Totes. And if you can get hold of them, what please, are you doing not? Please do. Send us some. <laughs> if you can get hold of them, then send those hard fought beers. We'll exchange services for them. 
What services are we offering? I was going to offer you up uh, in a consulting capacity as a... Um, uh, like Queer Eye? An expressive I'll go, I'll go dancer. in and turn you into a really dull beer nerd. Yes. Yes, I'm the fifth member You're of You're going to make people more dull. <laughs> make people more dull again. That's your That's slogan. That's our new catchphrase. Yes. Awesome. Good. Glad we've cleared <laughs> that up.